Hi, this is Michael Adams for Stock Telegraph, and it's my great pleasure today to have um, a CEO roster webinar with Abrupa Minerals. Um, it's trading on the TSX 6 Venture, and the symbol is AVU. It's also trading on the German exchanges. And um, I got aware of Avrupa, I think, like a year ago, um, a little bit closer. Um, I was already familiar with one of their joint ventures partners, that's um, Blackheath, and which is also uh, well known in the German markets. And yeah, today joining me yeah, for the CEO roster is Kai Hoffman. Kai Hoffman is the chief editor and publisher of InvestorMagazine.com. That's a German, sorry, is that .com, Kai? Uh, .de. Okay, so it's a German, so it's a .de domain, um, and it's in German language. Um, he's a well-known and established uh, newsletter writer, stock news writer, analyst, and has a really good track record. And now it's my pleasure to yeah introduce to you uh, Paul Kuhn. He's the president and CEO of Avrupa Minerals, and then we have Mark Brown, and he's the executive chairman. Thanks, guys, for taking the time. Um, I know it's a little bit stressful, and um, some of your projects are in Portugal, and it's a really, uh, I think, uh, a busy day in Portugal because uh, the, the national team is playing um, Iceland today in a couple of hours. But anyway, so thanks for taking the time. And um, as I said in my introduction, yeah, both of us, Kai and myself, we are uh, familiar with Avrupa for a couple of years, or um, yeah, at least one year. and. Um, we did already a couple of video interviews. Yeah, I did one with you, Mark, in Munich at the Edelmetall Messe, and I did two quick ones with Paul, I think, in Vancouver in January, and a quick update at the PDEC. But a lot of things happened since then, yeah, um, after I spoke with Paul, and this is why I invited you guys yeah, to really run us through the presentation. Let's try to really explain the business model of Avrupa yeah, to, to the audience, because it's kind of, I wouldn't say unique, but you have a unique niche, right? You, are, you have a prospect generator model, which is focused in Europe. Um, you have you have precious metals on the one hand, but you also have a base metals, tungsten on the other hand. So, um, and a bunch of projects, right? And when we just talk about that, um, I got confused, right, with all these various projects. So what I would like to do is, um, Paul, maybe if, or, yeah, if you just start with a presentation and then Kai and myself will just um, ask a couple of questions in between. Mark, do you want to start off with, with it? Sure, um, I'll flip the page here uh, onto our wonderful disclaimer. Um, and this is a great summary page of, of our company. Um, you know, we're a prospect generator company and uh, exploration business is a very risky business and we've had great success over the last few years. We made two discoveries thanks to Paul and his team. And we mitigate that exploration risk by having great people working in fantastic uh, uh, countries that are mining friendly. Um, and we get joint venture partners and our joint venture partners have funded over $15 million of exploration so far in our short six year life. Um, we've actually only raised uh, publicly ten million dollars, and that's all Canadian figures. Um, so we've done very well. Um, we also keep our share structure tight. We have several uh, significant shareholders that support us and back us and participate in most of our financings. Um, and so these are different ways we mitigate the risk and try and get the uh, the real goal is to make money for our shareholders and be successful in exploration, and that translates into making money for our shareholders, getting the share price higher, and building our market cap. And uh, a big discovery can do that. I think you guys all saw Reservoir Minerals and what's happened to them. Um, we're in Kosovo. They're just across the border in Serbia. Um, that's a great example of how a company can be extremely successful doing uh, following the model that, uh, that they and us both follow. Okay. So I'll flip over. Here's where our projects are. A lot of people don't think of Europe as a great mining place, but there's some countries in Europe that have a very, very long history of mining. Um, not only that, um, the countries are economically challenged these days, to say the least. So uh, they really want us in there to, to find, make discoveries, the early stage exploration, and eventually build mines. Um, so if we can use this little pointer here. Um, we have one small project in Germany. Uh, it's a gold tin project. Um, we've made a discovery down here in Little Kosovo. It looks small, but it's one of our uh, biggest and best projects down there. 
Um, we just actually uh, put out a 43101 compliant gold resource estimate, which I'll talk more about in a bit. And here in Portugal, we have several projects. And Portugal is really the main focus for the company. In northern Portugal, we have a 43101 compliant tungsten resource estimate in one of our joint ventures there. And in southern Portugal, where our main projects are, and Paul can talk more about this, but um, we have one significant joint venture there called the Avalade Joint Venture. Uh, and in that area, we've made uh, a discovery over 1.8 kilometers of a copper lead zinc uh, uh, project. Okay, Mark, what like I know it's difficult probably, but what's the main focus? You said that the the main focus is Portugal actually, but Portugal is base metals and tungsten, yeah, which. Uh, I'm not too familiar, but I think the prices are not that good right now. While you have the precious metals in the Kosovo, yeah, and, and also when I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but on the last results that you guys um, released from the Kosovo project, uh, you got some really good traction in the stock market, right? So is it maybe at the right time to focus more on the, on the uh, Slivovo project? On the gold, yeah, um, we've we're, you know, we're doing a PEA on that project right now. I'll, I'll flip ahead here um, a couple of slides to answer that question, actually. Okay. So that's Slavovo project. Um, uh, here's Kosovo talking about why we're in Kosovo. You know, Kosovo is a brand new country, and uh, we made a significant discovery there. Um, uh, there has not been a lot of exploration there. Paul can talk about the, the details of that a bit more, but here's what's happened in our Slovovo joint venture. We, we've signed an option agreement with a partner uh, in 2014, and um, uh, the partner is a big Australian mining company, so a very good partner to have. In 2014, later that year, which is incredible by Paul and his group, we made a significant discovery. I'm just going to flip ahead to, uh, to show you that first drill hole we hit there. Um, this, uh, if I can put the pointer on here, hole number four, so our fourth hole, which is pretty unusual. You know, exploration usually don't hit anything until, you know, your 10th or 20th or sometimes 80th hole. Um, but we drilled from surface and we hit 126 me meters of 6.2 gram per ton gold, 15 gram silver. So that's, that's what you're talking about, Michael. That was yeah. one of our first holes in 2014. We followed that up several other holes across this uh, nice... Oh, we lost him. Whoop. Okay, yeah, maybe. Oh no, that's there's a thunderstorm right now here in Cologne. Um, I'm not sure about the weather in Vancouver, <laughs> but maybe, maybe Paul, you can just pick it up and. Well, and they can continue Mark's um, <laughs> comments about the uh, Slavovo thing. Yeah, we um, we uh, were in in the first year of our work there. We uh, we made a discovery on the fourth hole. And, and by the time we finished uh, our drilling in the fall of 2015, we'd outlined an area that um, had contiguous um, uh, or continuous mineralization, gold and silver mineralization, in, a, in such a way that we could actually put a resource together. So at that point, um, the, our partner had spent 2 million euros on the project and had earned, in, uh, earned into the project uh, 70, 75%, I believe. Um, and they took over as the operator. So although we are, um, how should I say it, uh, we're not making a lot of news on that one right now. Our, our partner has been uh, hard at it this, uh, this uh, spring and have, have already spent over 650,000 euros um, moving the project ahead towards a, a PEA. So we're, we're, we're quietly moving ahead and we'll have a news release updating updating the, um, the progress at Slovovo sometime in the next uh, um, five to seven days, something like that. Um, but the, 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 um, the partner has drilled uh, a number of holes for hy hydrogeological work. They're planning some metallurgical test drilling. Um, there's a bit of exploration drilling going on. Uh, we're, we've started an environmental uh, baseline study, a social baseline study. Uh, basically, they're um, they seem to be in it for the long term, meaning they want to get this um, pre-feasibility uh, done and mining license application completed, uh, perhaps by the end of this year or the first first quarter of next year. Um, and at that point, when they've completed all of that, they'll have earned another um, another five percent of the of the property. Um, so. 
there's not much we can do in Kosovo ourselves right now. Uh, we've, okay. the, the team is fully seconded to the, to the joint venture entity. They're doing only joint venture work at the moment. So there's nothing new planned in Kosovo other than keeping the, um, the Slovovo project moving forward, uh, making it, um, you know, putting it into a pre-feasibility and, and presumably adding, uh, adding ounces of both gold and silver to the project. Okay, um, two quick questions. And Mark, um, welcome back, if you can hear me. Okay, we can't we can't hear you right now. Anyway, uh, Paul. It's the bad weather here. I don't know what the problem. Yeah, is. it's the same over here. We have a thunderstorm um, here in Cologne. Anyway, Paul, uh, two quick questions. Um, is it is it typical is it typical that the your joint venture partner is the operator on the project? And second, um, can you give us a little bit more information about Burn Cut because the other joint venture partners, Colt and um, Blackheath, I think they are they are uh, known in Germany. But um, is Burn Cut a public uh, company or is it a private company? Uh, it, Burn Cut is a private company. It's part of the uh, Thyssen, Thyssen Group, which you should know quite well. Um, it, it's a <laughs> it's a private private German uh, mining mining company. Oh, um, and it's owned by Thyssen. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I wasn't aware of I that. I didn't know that. I wasn't yeah, aware of that there, too. There, it's um, I I don't I can't tell you which branch of the of the group uh, of the family uh, business it is, but it um, it's it's not the Thiessen Krupp business side. It's just the Thiessen business, and Burncut is um, their major business. Um, they they build they build underground mines. They uh, operate underground mines. This is um, maybe their first. Um, foray into surface open pit mining. Uh, they're working on five continents uh, right now. Um, they're a well-known mining contractor and, and have a lot of money. Uh, they're private, so they're not too um, worried about the vagaries of the stock market uh, and seem to uh, be moving ahead quite well right now. Okay. So, um, okay. so that's actually the, your biggest joint venture partner, right? Even if it's a private company, because Blackheath yes. and Cold, they're both like small and micro cap companies, right? Yes, and they're that, both that's correct. and they're both public. And as, as all of us know, we are the last couple of years have been very, very challenging. Um, especially to raise money, yeah, so to move the projects forward. So um, just coming back to the second part of my question, so is this the, the model that you are the non-operating part of the joint venture? or We, we, um, we, we're not miners, we're, we're explorers. Um, we're really good at what we do. We've, as Mark said, we've made two discoveries um, in the last couple of years. Um, so we get to a point in the, in the joint venture where where we, we want the partner to take over. Okay. Um, in, in, in Slovovo case, the obvious, uh, as they're miners, they know, how to, they know how to build mines, they know how to, to do all this stuff where that's not our, our specialty or, or our strength. Okay. So oh. one, one quick thing, uh, Kai. Um, typically, we, uh, we do a joint venture. It starts off at a 51% level, and we operate to that level um, in – in all of the cases so far, our partner has not, um, until Colt, has not been operating by themselves in in our uh, in the area where the where the joint venture is. So they've asked us to continue. So typically, you know, we've gone to 51 percent, and in Colt we're at 60 60 percent, and we're still operating. Blackheath they're at 75, and we're operating. But uh, burn cut. Um, the time for burn cut to start the operation was after the uh, the first uh, the first two legs, and and they are um, the operator, and and we're happy about that. Okay, just just quickly uh, about the joint venture. Um, can you summarize like the the milestones they have to hit um, to get to certain per percentages? I might have missed that earlier. And uh, can you give me some more geological details, like what kind of uh, what type of uh, project is it, and uh, have you done any me uh, metallurgical testing yet? Um, okay, the, the, the project is, a, is an earn-in, and they had to spend, um, let's see, 2 million euros to get, uh, what was it, 75% uh, mark? It's not on. Um, no, he's gone again. <laughs> I, I can't remember if it's 75, I think it's 75%. Um, they spent 2 million euros. Um, at that point, um, they became the operator, and to get to 85%, they had to produce a pre-feasibility study. Um, okay, so they're, they're at 75% right now? They're at 75% right okay. now. 
um, to get to the next step uh, to finish the pre-feasibility and the mining license application, they'll get 85%. So they'll get an, addi an additional 10%. No, but to feasibility, that's nice. So uh, it's usually uh, you know, it's a, it's cost a for studies and stuff. It's it's a small project right now, but <laughs> but um, it's looking like it'll it'll increase in size uh, as we as we keep moving forward. As 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 an explorationist, I would like to have kept uh, put more exploration uh, money into the ground this year, but uh, they're really keen on on getting started with a small mine. Um, as fast as possible. So they're they're limiting the um, the exploration work right now to basics for pre feasibility and spending more time on stuff like the metallurgy and the hydrogeology and and uh, uh, ground control and, yep. and rock rock mechanics and that sort of stuff. Yeah, of course. So all yep. those sorts of things they're, they they are doing right now. Um, they have not completed the metallurgy. Um, they've uh, you know they've they've started the work on it. Uh, they've sent quite a few samples into the uh, into the lab already. Um, there's going to be a number of drill holes in the next month or two, specifically for met testing. Yep. Uh, so the things that need to be done are getting done. The social the social stuff is getting done. Uh, the environmental baseline has already been uh, all that work has been started. Uh, so they're really doing a pre feasibility and and. Along with it, along uh, according to Kosovo mining laws, um, we've got to make a um, an application for a mining license by uh, uh, the middle of next year, uh, 2017. Okay. So um, uh, we're we're rushing it a little bit because we want to get it done and and maintain our our um, our license structure over there. Uh, we've had to reduce the size of the license. In addition to the pre-feasibility, pre uh, Kai, we're also getting a long ways towards the mining license application um, uh, for the same for the same period of time. So we're getting a bit of a bonus here. Burn cut um, uh, the, the needs for pre-feasibility and the needs for mining application, uh, mining license application are pretty much overlapping. So burn cut's doing both at the same time. So um, they're moving ahead quickly. Uh, they've, like I've said, they've already spent 650,000 plus euros this, uh, since the first of the year, um, and uh, we've drilled a few holes. We've we've done quite a bit of work. Um, I can't I can't say much about it um, and, uh, because they're they're the operator, and I have to rely on what they're telling me to some extent. Sure. What, what, what's their target? What's their goal, though? Do they want to be in production by 2019, or what, what's the what's the plan? The um, the optimistic plan is to have um, um, gold by the uh, sometime in 2018, the first half of 2018. Um, I I'd love it, uh, but I don't know how quickly they can operate. They're, they're, they are moving very quickly right now. Uh, they're yep. not fooling. They're not fooling around. It's a, but but the other thing, Kai, is right now they're we're looking at a very small uh, startup uh, pit. Uh, the, the idea being, you know, get get things going slowly, then then we're able to expand a little bit easier uh, through the regulation process. If we if we tried to do something really big, really fast, you know, would add a couple of years. We might not have so much uh, um, ease in getting our permits. Uh, so the, the the point is is to start slow and build it step by step. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, one other question that just came to my mind is um, you have various other licenses that are open for new joint venture partners, right? That's what you indicated, on, I think, in one of the latest press releases and also uh, when we were chatting quickly in Toronto, yeah, that you're open for new um, business partners. Well, so what? We, how do you how do you so select your business partners? So what would be like the parameters where you say, okay, that's an acceptable joint venture partner? Well, in a perfect world, um, we, our, our, our partner would be a miner, uh, some, uh, some entity that knows how to mine, has experience in mining, uh, can build a mine. Uh, it's not a perfect world, uh, so it doesn't always work that way. Um, with Blackheath, uh, because we're in the, the, the license they um, have earned into as a, as a tungsten tungsten license with them they had a lot of experience uh, previously in Portugal with tungsten right and and so even though they're not miners uh, they knew how to get to the mining stage because they'd done it before 
uh, in Portugal. Um, our our uh, present partner at, um, at uh, Antofagasta uh, is, uh, sorry, at the Alvalade, is um, looking to expand its, uh, its, um, uh, its uh, presence in Spain and Portugal, and, and they wanted to um, um, give a shot to the Alvalade project uh, to help enhance their standing in Portugal. And, and they're, they're explorers. They've, um, they're, they're, they, they do well on exploration. They're good Good uh, fundraisers in the past, so this seemed to um, this seemed to be able to uh, to be a good uh, partnership when when the Antofagasta team uh, moved out. So we pick our partners to some extent uh, by um, uh, by uh, availability uh, because it's a tough market right now. It hasn't been so easy when it's uh, when it's a little bit better market. Then I'm really looking for um, uh, groups that can withstand down, up, down uh, cycles, you can build a mine. Uh, that's the obvious uh, thing. It doesn't always work that way. Though. Right. And, and, are you, are you no, go ahead, Kai. No, go ahead. Uh, are you receiving any management fees or any uh, payments or in regard we, to um, the projects? We uh, we received management fees for Alvalade for the time being, and uh, we did for um, the Slovovo project until uh, Burn Cut became the operator. Uh, we also, um, you know, our, our geos uh, get paid by the joint venture. Um, mm -hmm. Our, you know, our some of our overhead gets paid by the joint venture, even whether or not there's a, a management fee. Uh, Blackheath, Blackheath uh, deal did not have a management fee, but I, uh, you know, the accountant got paid some. The I got paid a little bit. Uh, our management got paid as part of the team uh, working the uh, project. So some of the funds. Um, that we've raised, um, uh, that Mark has raised in Canada, uh, don't have to be going to salaries for the uh, uh, Avrupa management uh, yeah. because they're part of the joint venture and working on the joint venture, part of the salaries get paid directly by the, the partner. Yeah, and bringing up the financing, um, actually that's something for you, Mark, I guess. Paul mentioned that um, you get paid, or Avrupa gets paid um, for part of, of the overhead costs by some of your joint venture partners and actually you, you just announced the financing for 1 million which will probably based on the business model like this prospect generator business model you don't have all these exploration costs so this this 1 million will take you or like will carry you through at least a year or what's what's the the plan that is the plan i mean last year about this same time we raised 1 million dollars as well that lasted about a year it probably isn't quite enough because we stretch things quite a bit um, but we do that and then uh, we spend, you know, a lot of our money goes to G&A that we raise publicly, but uh, probably about 50% to G&A and 50% actually to uh, finding new projects and, and uh, for Paul and the team to look at right. and advancing those early stage projects so we can actually get joint venture partners in. And then the big bulk of our exploration spending is all from the partners and in the last six years, like I was saying earlier, we've had $15 million spent and we've done on average about two drill programs a year. Um, and that's a big deal for a junior resource company. A lot of companies don't get that. So the financing now, so it'll be about the same thing. We hope it'll last us about a year. We'll see how it goes. We've got some big plans on things we want to do. And anytime we have big ideas and big plans, it always costs a little more money, so we spend a bit faster. But if those things work out, it's usually very, very good for the shareholders. Okay. How do you feel the sentiment right now on raising capital? Um, it has, has been almost impossible the last couple of years, but since a couple of months, yeah, let's say since PDEC, which usually is kind of the top of the year, yeah, it seems to be way better yeah, to me. I see a lot of placements, a lot of oversubscribed placements. So what's your, what's your feeling? Do you have any difficulties raising that for the, the money? Well, Michael, as you know, we, we, um, we're a fairly conservative group. I always announce placements that we're very, very sure we can raise that money. And in the history of Avrupa, we have oversubscribed every single placement we've done. Uh, and, and that's a tribute to the results we've had from, from both Portugal and Kosovo. Um, but right now, for the first time in uh, probably four years, um, you know, we announced the private placement, and usually people know that as a signal to stop taking calls from Mark Brown. <laughs> but this time, we've been we've been getting a lot of inbound calls. Okay. Um, and I have, I have, I've had groups coming in. Actually, matter of fact, we had somebody from Switzerland calling that I, I, I didn't know. We'd never met before. I don't think Paul knows him either. Um, looking to participate in our private placement. 
And so, um, so that's refreshing for us. And so we are getting good calls. People know what we've done. They know the success we've had. And they see the market turning, and that's a big deal. And I think gold, like you were saying earlier, is leading the way on all that. Although i got to say, zinc has jumped up quite a bit as well. It's over 90 cents now. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of zinc in southern Portugal. Right. And... Um like the, the new projects you mentioned, like you, you're looking for new fresh projects for Paul, right? So to do some exploration work, uh, will this be more the base metal sector or also the precious metal sector? Both. Yeah, I mean, we, he can add, Paul can answer. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're opportunists, Michael. Um, gold in Kosovo, base metals in Portugal. Uh, there are some possibilities for gold in other parts of Europe. Um, Kosovo, I'm, I've got another license. Uh, Burncut is is supporting me on that license right now, but I'm not sure they want to continue. Or they're just too busy with Slovo. But I'm also looking for um, generative joint venture partners for Kosovo. Uh, we we'd like to when we when we get our guys back uh, from the project, we'd like to go back out and find it, another one of these things. And so I'm I'm. Um, I'm looking around for, for other gold exploration companies to try to interest them into uh, generative joint ventures for Kosovo. Well. Portugal, Portugal, the um, possibilities are pretty much uh, uh, copper and zinc. Uh, in southern Portugal, that's really the biggest, the biggest of the uh, of the of the target areas. We think uh, there's some other target areas in South Portugal that are potentially copper gold. Uh, possibilities and our uh, our Alvito project is um, it's a good example of that. It's not in the pyrite belt. It's it's in a belt north uh, north of the pyrite belt, and and it's a copper gold target. And I'm I'm running potential partners through that one uh, there to, for for joint venture. And so we're you know we're keeping things going right now slowly, but it's um, there's a, certainly a lot more interest in the joint venture. Uh, side of things than there has been in the past year. On the common theme with this stuff is that we're looking for really, really big projects, big targets, you know, elephant country, that's the kind of things we've been uh, exploring for so far, and that's what we'll continue to look for. Okay. And uh, yeah, Avrupa means uh, Europe and Turkish, right? So the, the focus remains uh, Europe and any geological or any areas of, of preference, and you mentioned Portugal and Kosovo, obviously, but there are projects in Spain and uh, Northern Ireland is recently, so. We're, um, right now we're sticking to Portugal and Kosovo. Both countries are fairly easy to work at. Uh, both are underexplored. Uh, both have quite a bit of potential. Uh, and both have old mining districts, so it means we can find a lot of old data for pretty, uh, pretty low cost. Um, Spain, um, there's some possibilities in Spain. Uh, right now, uh, we've got our hands full in, in uh, Portugal and, and, and Kosovo. Okay. So, do you want to move uh, to some other slides in the presentation? Yeah, let's go back a bit here um, and talk about Albulati for a sec here. Um, I'm going to go right back to, um, you know, why we're in Portugal here. And, and Paul can explain this very well, and I'll, I'll pick up the pointer here on this slide. So this is southern Portugal here. And what a lot of people don't know who aren't geologists or not in the mining business is that this whole belt going right through here is called the Iberian Pyrite Belt. And it's literally been mined since the Roman times. Um, mining was a bit rougher in those days, and they used slaves, but they mined a lot of things that were sticking out of the ground. And a lot of those things were found, and as a result, you can see down here, uh, there's more than 85 known deposits. So those are all fairly large deposits. Um, you can see some of the active mines here. Um, these stars are the active mines. Nevis Corvo is owned by Lundin Mining. Um, and we're right in this belt here on the Portuguese side. We believe the belt continues up through here towards Lisbon. There's a, Lisbon's just up here. And we've been exploring through this whole area right from the Spanish border all the way through. Um, Paul and the team have picked up uh, some great properties in there. And a couple years ago we had... Uh, Antofagasta was our partner in this area on what's called the Alvalade project and we made a discovery there and we advanced that discovery and actually uh, uh, came up with an area of uh, copper lead zinc mineralization with a little bit of copper uh, sorry a little bit of gold and uh, silver also um, uh, right in this area here and what's what's significant about that is people ask well can you mine in southern Portugal well look at all the mines around us 
Um, and this, this little dotted line here is a railway that was built to move the ore from Nevesh Korvo uh, to Setebal, which is where it's uh, put on a ship. And we're within a stone's throw of that in some of the areas we've been drilling. Um, and that discovery, I'm going to flip ahead here, um, is this Alvalade project. So this is very, very quick for our exploration terms. 2012, we found a partner. <coughs> Um, they spent four million dollars on the project. 2014, only two years later, the team made a fantastic discovery there, and I'll go over some of the drill results. We expanded it and kept drilling. 2015, Antivagasta was in the worldwide cutback, and um, uh, they sold their interest, their 60% interest they had earned in so far, for six million dollars to a company called Colt Resources. Um, in 2016, Colt started funding another drill program. So let's go and look at some of those results here. Um, on this hole, SES002, it's one of the first holes we hit. Uh, we hit 10.5 meters there, 1.8% copper, 75 grams per ton silver, 2.5% uh, lead, 4.3% zinc, and, and some tin and cobalt as well. And tin and cobalt is important because it's the same kind of things they have at the Nevis Corvo mine. Uh, so it looks very similar to that. Now these are areas where, if you know southern Portugal, there's earthquakes and there's been a lot of faulting over the years. Um, these things started on the seabed and were moved up onto the earth, uh, the dry earth, and um, uh, we've been drilling into that and we've hit it in several more spots over the last few years. Uh, and the next thing coming up that we need to work on, which Paul and the group want to do in the next drill program, is of course to put these things together and see how big each individual lens of ore would be. Uh, but you can flip down here and look at this hole number 10. We hit almost 58 meters. This one had 0.4 gold in it, 25 grams silver. Uh, but we're really looking at the copper here, uh, 0.3 copper, 0.6 lead, and 1.95% zinc. And those are similar grades to what you see in other deposits in the area. And we're gonna, um, we've, we've done a bunch more holes here. We had another 51 meters. This was a hole we just announced earlier this year. 0.4% uh, copper, 2% zinc, 0.4 uh, grams gold. So we've got a lot of stuff going on here, and to me this is a really exciting time because we know we're kind of into something. The geologists have a lot to do, a lot of work to figure out, but as we keep drilling, we're not going to hit in every hole, but we'll have a series of good drill results coming up as we get back into drilling. We're not drilling right now, but we expect to be drilling later this year. So um, anyway, we've got a lot of excitement coming up in this project, and it, it over 1.8 kilometers shows you that it has the potential to be very, very large, and, and that's the kind of thing we're looking for. That's that's um, interestingly on that license. That's only a small part of the license that's uh, been been uh, seriously worked on. We've made another discovery on the license. Uh, that's a, a stockwork vein rather than a massive sulfide uh, uh, deposit. Uh, but we, we we haven't been able to uh, get back to that area. Uh, Colt has been eager to um, to work at the Ses Maria zone and, and try to expand that but we've got another discovery and a lot of area on the license we haven't even touched yet so the, the key here is the geology um, you know the team put together a really great geological story uh, we used a lot of old data we relogged core um, there was oh, 55 60,000 meters of uh, core from previous projects stored around the country and we we relogged that stuff two three four times even uh, we went back and did geochemistry, uh, a lot of old, we relied on a lot of old geophysics and put together uh, an under, a subsurface uh, geology map that uh, allowed us to make the Ses Maria's discovery uh, as quickly as quickly as we did. Uh, so we, we were keen, you know, our work is really geology, um, going out and finding things and, and uh, doing the early work. This goes back to your early question uh, about why does the partner become the operator? And again, it's it's a matter of expert expertise. You know, we're we're good at exploration. We're good at finding things, but none of us in this company um, can go out there and, and do all the things you have to do to build a mine. Um, and and we don't um, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves and try to do it ourselves. It's sort of a big risky business, and our business model is to find a bunch of these things and spread the risk around, allowing our partners to. You know, spend the big bucks, and okay, they earn in a, a substantial portion of the of the uh, project, 70, 75, 80, 85 percent. But in the end, if we have four or five of these things, 
um, and we're the 15% or the 20% uh, owner of these things, we, we spread the risk out quite a bit, and we, um, we have a chance of having income in a, in a, from a number of different sort of sources. Paul, is there, because you brought that up, is there like a minimum interest you are always going to keep on the projects, or...? It, it varies, Michael. You know, we've, we've made all of our deals in, in, in bad economic times. Uh, and, and in order to, to move things forward, we've had to accept deals that look bad to you guys. But the reality is they're, they're good for us because uh, they move us forward. Okay. Um, I, like I said a, few, a minute ago, I wouldn't mind being the 20% owner of four or five of these things or the royalty owner. Um, of four or five of these things. And I totally agree. Yeah? It's just that I guess some investors, yeah, and there's two types of investors. Some of them want to go kind of all in. Yeah, and let's say they want to go all in. They might be better off to directly invest into Blackheath or Colt, right? Um, but if they want the protection of the diversification, right, which is very, very important in the mining sector, yeah, they should probably take a closer look at Avrupa. Is this how you can, or, or, both, or, or own all of them, right? So is that kind of how you can summarize it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, again, it varies. Uh, the deals that we, we made um, recently have been nuts, or trying to make recently, uh, um, aren't, haven't been easy because nobody has any money and nobody's willing to spend a lot on things. I'm I'm working on another one right now, which, if we can get it, will be um, worthwhile. But we're not going to be, uh, we're not going to end up as the, uh, as the, you know, the 75% owner. We're likely to be the 25% owner. Um, but you know what? If if it succeeds, then we've got another uh, potential source of income here. And 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 our deals are all structured uh, that there is a, a dilution clause in there that allows us to uh, exit with a you know, a 2% NSR. Oh. Uh, so if we decide we don't want to, we don't want to be the 15% owner, it, it isn't, it isn't worth it to us to raise the money. Um, and I'm thinking of Slovo here briefly. Um, we're going to end up being the 15% owner of a small gold mine. Well, there's a lot of potential uh, for it to become much larger. We think that that's a, um, a gold deposit sitting in a porphyry system. We don't know where the porphyry is. Uh, but there's a big system around there, and, and the question comes up, if we're the 15% owner, do we want to spend the millions and millions and millions to build a porphyry project, or do we want to be the 2% NSR holder for the for the rest of the life of the mine? Okay, yeah, no. I get it. Porphyries are expensive to drill out, so, yeah. yeah. Porphyries are expensive, they cost a lot of money, and if we don't have, if we've been diluted to a 2% NSR, you know, good for us. Okay, let me ask you another question. Um, you're a pretty um, small team, right? Um, how many projects can you handle? You already have a number of projects, but um, there has to be some kind of an upper limit. Like, I, I guess you can't handle, handle like hundreds of projects, right? So what, what yeah. do you assume? Well, it's in Portugal, I, I think the max we can probably do in the south is three or four. Um, it's not a huge country, and, and we can... Um, I've got a, a team when they're when they're available that that's um, uh, mobile. Uh, we, we can work from project to project, but the geology is pretty much the same. Um, if we're working in Kosovo, we'll have a separate team over there. Uh, can't possibly have um, you know one exploration person for all those different countries. So uh, right now we're slim because we're not putting we're not working um, we're not uh, our partners are not uh, pushing right now with drill programs, uh, but we can gear up to have uh, four or five geos working on our projects in, in a matter of a few weeks if necessary. Uh, okay. Well, and we're also the operator of these projects early stage, in early sta days when we're doing the exploration, but as we make these discoveries and stuff, quite often the partners, when they earn in, want to take over. So we, at that point, we're just oversight on the projects, and uh, and we can get on to new things as well. So, for example, in Kosovo, the, the, our joint venture partner is now the operator. So we're still there on the ground, and we've got people there, but um, but they're running the show, so it frees up some of our uh, our guys. Right. Okay. 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 So what's the next slide? What what are the next steps for Rupa here? You're raising the money. Um. Yeah. Well, that's what people want to know. What's exciting and what's coming up, and uh, you know, on on Alvalade, we've got potential for more drilling to be funded by Coltier coming up. 
Um, you know, we did the gold resource on Slavova, and we're working on the, the PFS there now. So that's interesting. Um, Paul and his team are also looking at a, a, some new projects like we talked about in new areas, but those might be early stage. Um, but Paul and his team have also been hosting um, some other groups visiting new or, uh, current projects that we have there in Portugal. And um, what's exciting for us is to get another potential joint venture and have even more work going on. So, you know, we have three active projects going on right now, and there's steady news flow coming out of those. Um, and, and you never know what that can be, but hopefully it's exciting coming up, uh, especially when we get drilling going on. Um, but we're, what, one of our goals is to add another joint venture this year. Um, the company is actually only six years old, and we've had six joint venture partners over the years, three of which are currently present and active and earning interests and uh, um, working towards actually, uh, you know, uh, some kind of a 43101 compliant resource estimate if it's not there already. Uh, but we'd like to add at least one new joint venture this year. Um, uh, we don't know when that'll come, but we'll be excited about that. And often when these things happen, the initial exploration is exciting. And, and these projects we're showing to people are drill ready. So we, we always try and get, uh, there's usually a little bit of initial kind of on the ground exploration work to be done. And then we get right into drilling on these projects. So, you know, that's what we're trying to do this year. And uh, we're feeling good about it right now. Paul, I don't know if you have any other comments on that. No, that's, uh, that's my job after the financing uh, is to work on uh, getting another joint venture going. Um, what are the lease costs? I, I saw you have quite a bunch of projects in, in Portugal. Um, what are the yearly like, lease costs and uh, not, not GNA, but uh, project maintenance costs, I'd say? Well, the, the Portuguese government requires a, uh, a guarantee on the license, which is a, um, to be honest with you, a painful misuse of money. Um, basically, uh, they want to make sure we're doing our work and, and hold us hold a bond, basically, for the, the life of the exploration license. Um, well, let's, so let's be clear on that. Bond. That's not an environmental bond. It's actually a bond to make sure we do lots of work. And that's one of the ways they're really trying to encourage more exploration there. How do they encourage that way? The, uh, to, you have to pay into to a bond, they hold the money hostage so that you work for it to get it back. <laughs> that, that's right. And I'm not saying it's a, it's not a very great way to do it, but it, it is. It's it's not like it's an environmental bond, like where your money just sits there while you have the project until you clean up. It, it's actually a bond to make sure you do the exploration you promised to do. And you so, pay the exploration uh, from the bond, yeah. or how does it work? No, no, no. no, no the the bond, bond just sits there. We spend separate money on the project. Okay. Yeah, the bond. And then we bond get it back in the bond. If, if we've completed our work commitments and dropped the license, or we dropped the license because of lack of uh, potential, uh, the government is uh, supposed to send us the money back. Uh, however, it's dead money for the life of the license. Um, how much are we talking about? They, uh, it can be up as high as 75,000 euros for Avalad and, and 25,000 for smaller license. Um, yeah. The yearly, the yearly rental fees. There is a yearly rental fee, and that's uh, that varies again from twelve thousand five hundred to thirty thousand per year. Alvalade is thirty thousand, and uh, Alvinto is twelve thousand five hundred. Um, uh, Meritola maybe even fifteen thousand, and uh, or ten thousand, and Maritech is fifteen thousand. So it's not a lot, but it's it's money that. No, it, money it that, also adds you know, up, right? So. Yeah, it's 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 um it it, it keeps. It keeps us from, from um, expanding too fast. Uh, on the other hand, um, you know, I, we've, got to, we've got to have some licenses, so it is a necessary cost. And it's largely funded by our partners as well. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. Oh, as it should. So. Yeah. Other, other than that, then, you know, the, the, if we're still operating the license 100% and we're trying to dress it up, then we do have geological costs, but, but all of our Portuguese, South Portuguese licenses are ready for joint venture right now. We don't want to spend too much of any more money on any of them, um, other than, you know, just, just getting the uh, potential partners to come out and have a look. Okay. okay. Kosovo is pretty much the same thing uh, without the guarantee. Uh, there you have a, an annual work commitment, which you have to, which you have to fulfill. And, and um, you know, you claim your license, you, 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 uh, you pick a, 
I guess you're only allowed 50 square kilometers total in Kosovo, uh, but you, you pick your areas and, and you make an application for it, and, and if the government accepts it, then you can start working within three months. Portugal's a little bit slower. It takes about a year to get a license um, okay. because they go through a whole bunch of different things. But it, if you understand the system, then it works out pretty well. Yeah. Do you want to move forward to some other slides, um, which we haven't touched on right now? Yeah, I mean, we can talk about the tungsten project with Blackheath. Um, again, um, you know, we've got a 43101 resource there that's a nice grade of tungsten. It's a small project for us, but um, the way that the joint venture has been managed and moved ahead and our partner's been excellent, um, uh, it's just another value add for our company that we've got a, a yet another uh, 43101 compliant, you know, resource estimate there for tungsten. And tungsten's been the price of tungsten been following steel and iron ore. It's um, it's come down quite a bit, but it's starting to come back nicely now. So that's quite good. And our partner there, Blackheath, has some significant Chinese shareholders which uh, are very interested in tungsten. So they're managing that process, and we'll see what's going to happen. But um, uh, you know, that group is our partner because they discovered and built uh, a company called Primary Metals that was tungsten in northern Portugal before and, and sold out uh, in a better market. So we're kind of letting them run that and uh, we're happy to do that. It's run by a very good team over there at Blackheath. Yeah. Now Kai and myself, we know Jim pretty close and I guess we have all the respect and give him a lot of credits. Yeah. Um, Primary Metals was a good success for some of the German shareholders that have been involved at that point in time. So um, he has a good track record and um, I have no worries at all about Blackheath. Yep. Yeah, they've been yeah they, they've done very well. Yeah, Jim and Alex have been good, good guys to work with. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to go through all of our people here, but I just want to point out a couple of people on this list here, um, uh, particularly on this next slide here. Um, Paul Nellis, who's one of our directors, is one of our German directors, uh, is a mining engineer with a lifetime of experience, and he's been fantastic to work with. But the reason he was so key for us is because he, when, when Kosovo was just set up by the United Nations, um, he was one of the people they asked to step in and run some of the industries there. I think they thought mining first, but he ended up running, um, you know, the banking industry and the airport and the power at different times and overseeing these industries. And the Kosovo government's now taken over those things and running them themselves. Um, but Paul's a key guy for us to have there. Uh, he know, he's very well connected, knows the country, knows the culture. Uh, it's very important to us to have him there as a, as a key guy. And he's also a mining engineer. And the same with, um, just going down here, Adriano Barros, who, again, is our key guy in Portugal. Um, as you can tell, Paul Kuhn is not exactly Portuguese, and uh, neither am I. Uh, but Adriano is the guy who, again, has a lifetime of experience in Portugal. And he knows uh, the area. He's worked at a lot of the mines there. Um, he's like a small businessman now, oversees the industry, but he's a great uh, asset for us to have. Um, helps us negotiate, uh, keeps the cultural issues under control from, from our point of view that we know we have to work with over there, uh, explains it to us so we make sure we're taking the right steps with the communities and things like that. Um, and again, he's he's our local guy on the ground there. So those are our two kind of country guys, which, which is pretty important for us to have in these areas. Okay. This, this slide is just a bit of a summary of what we're doing in the next uh, year here. And it looks a bit busy. There's a lot of things going on in our company, and there always has been. Um, we're an active group. Um, you know, we've got this financing going on now, and it'll be done shortly here. Uh, we've got a lot of things we want to do. So there's work going on at the Kovish Tungsten Project, upgraded a little bit, a little bit more environmental work. Um, we're looking for new joint venture partners. Um, Cold Resources completed a financing a little while ago, and they've got got big plans to do different things, and we'll see what happens there, but um, they sure talk big when it comes to our El Valade project and what the kind of work they want to do there, and we'll, we'll see what happens coming up in the next few months here. Um, and this pre-feasibility study at Slovovo is is uh, it's going to be interesting, because I think what you'll find there, uh, Kosovo has 46% unemployment, labor is relatively cheap, they really need mines there. I think what we'll find there is that um, the government's going to really be encouraging us to get that mine into production and we'll be able to do it at a fairly low cost. So we'll see what those 
those numbers come in at, um, you know, maybe by the end of this year, or early next year. Um, and then we do have some very exciting ideas. We're not talking about too much. Things we've actually been working on for a couple of years, properties we'd like to pick up. And we've had people go visit them from us, and we've actually even had some potential joint venture uh, partners go visit new projects. Because what we do, and one of the strategies is when we acquire new projects, is to kind of have them ready to go, as we say, teed up for potential joint venture partners. And if, uh, if that's the case, then we can get a joint venture on those things fairly quickly. So we take our time, look at these things, do a lot of the groundwork that, that is required to make these properties attractive for joint venture partners. And then we kind of say, hey, would you guys be interested in something like this in this kind of a country? Um, it helps us to understand the laws of local countries, uh, particularly the exploration laws uh, and the ownership. And it's, uh, it's really important for us to do that. So that's kind of ongoing and that will be ongoing all the time in the life of Evrupa. So there's a lot of things coming up. We'll have steady news flow over the next... Uh, um, well, a year at least, with all the things we have going on. And, uh, you know, one of the real value adds for the shareholders is drilling. And we hope to be drilling at Alvalade later on, and then hopefully at, uh, at one of our uh, current projects when we bring in a new joint venture partner, hopefully sometime before the end of the year. But we'll see how that goes. Okay. okay. Since you have it on the slide, I have to ask, what are you doing in Germany? Why are you <laughs> doing it? And what's the end game? <laughs> Well, uh, we've had this license uh, for three years now, and, and the reason we picked it up uh, was because nobody had ever explored it uh, for gold. And it was the same kind of uh, geology as northern Portugal uh, is. Uh, there was a history of um, tin mining, tungsten a little bit, uh, uranium, all sorts of uh, base metals in the Erzgebirge. Uh, and, and I wanted to... Um, give uh, gold in eastern Germany a, a possibility. So we picked up the license. We, uh, we've we done a bit of work in the beginning, the first year or so. We, we identified some areas where there were gold, significant gold anomalies. Uh, we discovered uh, what looks to be a tin scar in the southern part of the property, and then we just haven't spent much time on it since then. Uh, we are going to um, have to have a look at it this year. Uh, the license has been renewed, but we've got to do some, some work on it, um, either get going on it or move on. Okay, um, what's like the permitting that? like in Germany? It's like, what does it look like? How does the lease work? Well, um, our, I, I'm based in Germany, and I have to admit, I haven't really come across a project in Germany. So. Germany's actually uh, quite a bit going on in Germany right now. Uh, in, in the uh, copper belt uh, that runs into Poland, there's a bit of activity. Uh, there's a number of areas in eastern and southern Germany that seem to be uh, interesting right now. And in the old Parts Mountains areas, people have continued to, to be looking around. Uh, but in this case, um, our partner is a, is a German company based in Freiburg. Uh, they do all the licensing, all the all the um, government uh, liaisons, and they're they're a geological consulting company. So we relied on them in the beginning, and earned into 85% of the license. And now we have to, uh, uh, you know, basically get going or not. And uh, they've got some ideas. They're more tin and interested in tin than in gold. Mm -hmm. and, and and actually, uh, there seem to be some tin possibilities and. When I get questions about the license, it's usually in rather than the gold. Okay. So this has been going, you know, we've been talking for over an hour now. So um, I think, you know, not to lose our audience here, I think we should put a nice little bow around it, or you actually have already with this, this final slide. Um, uh, I'd call it, you know, you know share structure. Oh, that's a good one, actually, yeah. to, to wrap things up. Because we haven't, there you go. That's that. our final haven't slide. talked about that one yet. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, just Mark. I mean, basically, uh, you know, share structure is really important to us. And the reason it is because it gives more volatility to the stock. So we'll, after the financing, we'll have actually 65 million shares outstanding. Um, but there's a group that own about 50% of those that are long-term holders. And uh, it's really important. We've got some warrants coming up in September. We, get to, we expect to get exercise. That will bring in some more funding for us. Um, but really important is this, um, you know, the partner, we've, we've raised more funding from partners than we have from the stock market, which there, I don't think there's any companies that can actually say that other than us. I'd have to do some research on that. We've also signed one joint venture every year in the life of our company. 
Um, that's pretty fantastic, and they've spent significant amounts. I mean, there's been some smaller numbers here, um, but Kalanan only spent that much, but they also invested even more, uh, about half a million dollars, into the company. Um, we had Lowell Copper in for a short period before they kind of ran out of money, um, and that was supposed to be part of a, a, a bigger work program on the Salvito project. So we've got some great projects in great areas. We're looking for uh, very large deposits. Um, and a lot of our funding is designed to protect the investment made by our shareholders. So that's kind of key for us. I mean, we're big shareholders. Between Paul and I and the management group, we own over 15% of the company. So that's really important to us. And uh, we protect our shareholders. We try to bring in long-term shareholders. And um, we bring in a lot of funding to mitigate our risk from our partners. So I, I think that's a, a great point to end on. And what's going to make uh, the difference for the shareholders? Obviously, a big discovery. And, and we've... We've been scratching the surface on a few really nice discoveries, but um, we've got more to come, and we're working in areas that have potential for very, very large mines. Perfect. Okay, guys. Um, I think that was a good um, summary. Yeah, uh, the share structure looks very, very good. And if I do the math, yeah, um, you've, you've spent probably 15 cents, right, per share. Or your joint venture partners. Uh, even a little bit more, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, on a fully diluted base, right? So let's say it's a hundred million shares, um, yeah, fifteen million. So that's fifteen cents. And the stock, I'm not sure about the trading today, but yesterday it was around the ten cent level, right? That's exactly where the placement is. So uh, it is. to me, yeah. to me, just to summarize it from my end, um, I really like this kind of mellow approach, right? It's not all and and. Kai and myself, we are talking to a lot of companies that are only promising blue sky, right? Um, I think you guys, with your mellow approach, with your ability to raise money on the one end, which is important, but also to find um, and value really good projects, yeah, based on Paul's experience and the team. Um, the stock has not yet picked up, right? It's still steady, yeah, a, a slow volatile, a low volatility, which is good and bad. Um, but I, I agree, yeah, as soon as you come up with some some more milestones, yeah, which is a new joint venture partner, drill results, um, the stock should be way higher than it is right now. Just uh, my full disclaimer, I'm biased, right? I'm uh, I'm working together with, with Avrupa on various levels on a consulting agreement. Um, yeah, but again, that's still, you know me, yeah, even if I'm biased, that's my true feelings. Yeah, I, I believe that if you invest into Avrupa right now at this 10 cent, 12 cent level, you will be pretty, you will have a pretty good reward um, mid to long term. And yeah, maybe Kai, if you want to sum up in English, um, we will do the German one later on. Yeah, no, um, I think it's a good overview. Um, delivers, Avrupa delivers quite a bit of leverage, especially towards the copper price. Um, you know, copper's price has been depressed. It came down as of as of late again. Um, you know, based on the China wo worries here, um, but I think they're unbased or at least not as traumatic as everybody pretends to be. So uh, I think there's a nice upside here to the to the story, um, especially Kosovo. I, I personally like quite a bit. Um, you know, I, I hope you maintain sort of your pro rata at first, and uh, depending what the numbers look like of, of the pre feasibility study. Um, and see how you, how you can participate, not just with a 2% royalty. Um, other than that, I think Portugal looks interesting. Let's see what Colt comes up with, or actually what you come come up with for Colt um, mm -hmm. over the next you know six months. Um, I'm hoping you start to drill soon um, to use the summer and to deliver some results when everybody's back at their desk in September after Labor Day mm -hmm. um, in the U.S. and in Canada, obviously. So. Um, no, uh, I, I like the story. I've been following Paul and Mark for a while um, with Avrupa. Um, I think they're doing a great job um, making sure that the shareholder value is increased on a constant basis. And, uh, you know, I continue to watch the story. So um, keep me in the loop, guys. Perfect. And I, I urge you to take a look at the website. It's avrupaminerals.com. And, yeah, Mark Brown, you can see his contact data here. Yeah, he's available, I guess, if you have any um, questions. So for now, Paul, Mark, Kai, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, it was a really uh, interesting in detail presentation and um, yeah I'm going to to update my viewers and my readers on uh, on a constant base about the development so for now thank you very much Thanks thank you guys. take care it.